In this demo, I want to talk about this problem here. Um, so here you have transitional surfaces, and if you zoom in, you can see you have these edges. Um, so the surface is curved, it is a transitional surface made from a blend curve, or uh, it could also be a fillet, uh, but essentially this is circular. And if you look at the mesh, uh, the mesh has facets, so you can see straight lines. Um, so this is happening because of the mesh, but if you look at the control points that make up this surface, and you can do that by clicking on show points, you will see that actually the points for that surface, and it seems like it's not working very well, but uh, the points for that surface actually go further, and the surface seems to be okay. Uh, now this is a degree 2 surface, and typically for transitional surfaces you would want a degree 3, or even degree 5, uh, so degree 2 is not ideal. Uh, but that's not the problem here. The problem that you see is a problem with a mesh. Right? So surfaces are uh, visually shown in, or they are displayed in the viewport using uh, what we call polygons. So the mesh is polygons. Um, and if you do, let's see if we can resolve this corner really quickly and we can talk about how we can fix that. Um, so if we do a curve network, and I like to type in all of my commands, so I will type in network surface, uh, select on all of the four sides, press enter, and use tangency for this one surface. Typically I would say curvature, uh, but because this is a degree 2 transitional surface, it does not make sense to ask for curvature, um, and if you don't understand why, then you should go back to the earlier video where I explained how tangency and curvature works. Uh, using curvature here makes no sense. So let's use tangency, press OK, and you can see there is still this faceting happening, so it looks like there's a gap in the surface. Now, if you select all of these surfaces and you join them, sometimes the gap will disappear. And this is actually what's happening here, and you can see there's some strangeness happening in that surface. Um, so there is still something off with these uh, surfaces, but technically there is no gap. So um, this is not how you check for gaps. If you want to check for gaps, you need to go under Analyze, Edge Tools, Show Edges. So this is where you check for gaps, and in this case there is apparently one gap. So let's make sure we don't have a gap here, and one way we can do that is by using Explode. So I just used the right click on the Explode icon, which lets me use the Extract Surface command. So I'm extracting this surface, and what I can do is Match Surface. Here it is, Match Surface. Um, and if you don't know where to find Match Surface, of course you can go up here, under Surface, Surface Edit Tools, Match. So when you use this match command, typically you're able to match a surface to an edge. And I selected them in, in the wrong order. So let me cancel this, select one edge, select the other edge, and make sure we use a continuity that is position implied, position, and this should do the job. Now if this doesn't work, we can also use the refine match. So maybe it's a good time to use refine match, just in case. Um, and these are good settings, tangency of one, Curvature 0 0.05, yeah, that seems really good. Um, so let's use a refined match just in case uh, because I expect that if I do not use it, it may not work. Uh, and this is because I'm using Rhino 6 and I'm using this service release. Uh, and from my experience, using the refined match seems to give me better results. So this is what I would suggest if you do have a gap. Let's press OK and let's join these services back together. And make sure you join your surfaces, don't use group. Uh, if you use group, then basically the Edge Analyze tool will not work. Um, and what I typically do when I open a model is I actually ungroup everything, explode everything, join everything back again, just to make sure that the Edge analyze, Analysis tool actually works. Um, but you will still see the problem is still there. So this is how you would check for edges, but this is not how you would resolve the faceting in your surfaces. The faceting that you saw before was due to the mesh density, so the mesh wasn't very dense, 
so if you make your mesh more dense then you will not see any gap any longer and you can kind of see that happening here um, so one way that you can fix that is by going under your object properties and here you have this render mesh settings so technically your model is fine but if you want it to render well and not have this visual uh, problem here where the mesh doesn't appear the way it should you can click on custom mesh so if you click on custom mesh then you have settings that can be adjusted so if you click here you can change some of these settings and these settings are the same settings that you see when you do analyze zebra or analyze imap so these uh, settings here are basically they are very complicated, there's a lot of numbers, but all that matters is maximum edge length and minimum edge length. So minimum edge length is already very, very low. So in this case, all we have to do is change the maximum edge length. So if we say that the maximum edge length is any number, it will force the number to apply. So zero doesn't mean that the maximum edge length is zero. It means there is no setting. It's an automatic setting. Um, and the number is not set. So let's click on preview and you can see here there is facets. So that was the problem that we saw here with this edge. Uh, it was due to the low number of facets. But if we increase this number or increase the number of polygons we will get better results. So if I go under maximum edge length and change that to 0 0.1 and let's do a preview I should get a little more uh, denser, denser of a mesh, uh, so more polygons. Um, so I hope this makes sense. That's essentially how you would fix that. And if you wanted to 3D print a model, the settings would again work in the same uh, in the same way, uh, messing with the minimum edge length and maximum edge lengths. Uh, in the same manner, if you have a model that is very heavy, where you did a bunch of uh, patterns and holes. Uh, boolean operations, then what you can do is the opposite. You can say the, ma the minimum, um, you can say that the minimum edge length is greater. So you can say maybe it is um, 0.1 or 0 0.01, and then you can say the maximum would be 10. And then your dense is going to be much larger. Um, let's do that. Let's do 0 0.1 and 10 for the maximum edge length and you will see that your mesh gets really really uh, light which can be good if your model is too heavy um, and so the greater the number especially for the minimum edge length the greater this number is the lowest polygon count you will see so the lighter the mesh and the more facets you will see so let's go back to some standard settings and use 0 0.001 and 0 0.1 for the maximum edge length preview and now you can see the difference it's going to give me a much denser uh, mesh and uh, a much cleaner edge where the transitional and the fillet actually intersect so this is how you would fix this uh, this issue um, and this is how you would also check for whether you have an opening between your surfaces or not just make sure that you do join all of your surfaces before using the Analyze Edge tool and check for any openings in your surfaces.